Brad, Tier 2 for Warriors, coming at you with a, another video. Today we're going to check out a video from 60 Minutes of Australia, which I found, about um, bioidentical hormones. I found this as part of the CBHRT group in Facebook. It is CBHRT and Washington, the fate of our biohormones and what we can do. This is a group mostly around um, women's compounded hormones, but hormones in general. And uh, everybody go search it, CBHRT and Washington, and uh, join that group. This is a really powerful video, and so I hope everybody's going to enjoy. It's secret women's business that's so secret, many don't even recognize it, despite it being something every woman will go through. Menopause, transition, the change. It doesn't matter what you call it, it can be overwhelming for both women and men. But thankfully, it isn't terminal. And it doesn't have to be life destroying, even though many women feel they're going mad when they're in the middle of it. And even better, once diagnosed, there are treatments that not only work, but contrary to long held belief, are also safe. <laughs> For more than 20 years, Michelle and Paddy Abbey have enjoyed the long and winding road of marriage and raising three children. Then, four years ago, in her late 40s, Michelle started to experience the first signs of perimenopause, the precursor to menopause, putting the brakes on life as she knew it. Now 51 and only recently diagnosed by doctors, Michelle is suffering symptoms that are devastating, but sadly not unique. What are the worst symptoms you've suffered? The worst um, is the sweats, the mood swings, forgetting things. Um, I started my master's in education. I had to put that on a delay for a bit because I just couldn't retain information and it was freaking me out. Then I woke up one day and I went, oh my God, my feet are killing me. How are you feeling in yourself, Michelle? I mean, I, I, obviously you're describing all these physical yeah. ailments. I mean, what was your mood like during, or what, and I, I shouldn't put in the past tense because we're talking about now, aren't we, still? This is what I... <sighs> I'd gather you were not feeling that great. No. You go through bouts of depression and then you're anxious and you're overthinking everything you do. And then at work I, I display a strong exterior but at times on things that were important to me I'd break down like this and i go, what is wrong with me? And my family were struggling to understand what was wrong with me and it was hard. It was really hard and I know no one talks about it. Mm. I'm sorry. Menopause was a similar, unavoidable and unfunny journey of discovery for comedian Jean Kitson. Overwhelming hot flushes, anxiety, aching feet and mood swings. We don't know about it. No one tells us. There's also formication, which sounds like sex with bureaucrats, but it's actually the sensation of ants crawling all over your skin. That's the symptom of menopause. It's a coming of age that no one wants. This explains a little bit more of uh, of her personality. I was trying to figure this out while I was watching. Like, she's such a good on-screen person. Like they must have got the perfect person. But obviously, she is the perfect person because she's going through, you know, these issues or whatnot. 
and but she's able to play with the host and whatnot but her delivery is just so good and she's so quick at just using these jokes oh this is really good i like this but it, it was just really funny I, I i couldn't understand why it was so good but now it makes a little more sense i didn't catch that part that she's actually a comedian <laughs> And if menopause is ever mentioned, the way it's talked about strikes fear into female hearts. What do you think of the way menopause is described? The menopause, the change. Yeah. That sounds horrifying. <laughs> the change. Um, that just sounds like the end. <laughs> it's all over. You know, that's the end of her. Say goodbye to your mother now. We won't be seeing her again. On average, the so-called change of life hits us around 50. But the symptoms of perimenopause can appear five to 10 years before then. And that can mean a lot of confusion and anguish. For as Dr. Kelly Teagle knows, many women are blindsided by severe symptoms. How bad can it get? I have women who come to me in tears saying that they think they're going mad. That's a really common one. Why do you think there seems to be such a gap in our knowledge about ourselves at this time of life? I think that it's very much perceived as being um, the, down, the downward spiral, you know, that it's all around ageing and um, that they're not going to be up to the job. So I think, unfortunately, it has a lot of negative connotations that lead women to feel shame and deny what's happening to them. Busy? I'm always busy. I'm in a hurry. Okay. I'm always rushing. <laughs> if women don't know what's happening to them... Well, it definitely doesn't help that your average doctor is a fucking jackass. And from what I've understood, what, I'm, uh, what I've gained from other doctors that I've asked about, they mentioned in med school that there's a whole whole piece of, you know, on hormones or whatnot, but it sounds like it's in this biological context where it's not in the context of treatment. And even though the standards of practice has changed where pretty much any doctor, you know, is able to treat these, these illnesses, to me, it sounds like this is a, a lack of education and a lack of push onto the medical system in the sense that one, they're not understanding it's neuroendocrine, that it's a brain inflammation is the, is the heart of disease. And that they're in a context of here's a pill, here's a pill for the other pill, and here's a pill for the other pill that the other pill didn't fix. So that's just what it sounds like to me. But also, you know, we need patients to, you know, push back on this. That it needs to be every single doctor is the baseline treatment. Every six months or every year that they're required to pull, or pull hormones, they're required to treat it. And if they don't, then people just don't see them anymore. Because at this point, patients just need to put it, put their foot down and it needs to be known. Either you're checking my hormones and you understand that the ranges are not black and white or you don't. There's no in between that's there. And either you're doing your job or you're not. Their own bodies, then the men who love them are truly in the dark. Many a day, Michelle's husband, Paddy, thought he was married to a stranger. Well, Paddy, what did you think was going on? Okay, no idea. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, she's, because she's such a happy, outgoing person. And like, obviously you have rows or whatever, over, but any little thing would set her off now. And she didn't know what it was. I didn't know what it was. Yeah, it um, must be an incredibly um, confusing time. Yeah, it is. Like, um, you think, Jesus, is it the marriage not working out? Like, is things going bad? You start thinking that, like, are we not getting on? I even think I said to the mm. kids a few times, I think this is it. Mm. Can't do this anymore. Slim pickings this morning, chooks. You are. For Jean Kitson and her husband, cartoonist Patrick Cook, marriage and menopause were not always happy bedfellows. Oh, Pablo, stop that. 
the stereotype of a menopausal woman is that she's snappy and angry and bitchy and all that. But I don't think that's really <clears throat> true. A lot of women feel lose their confidence, they feel um, more anxious and anger, and they might snap, but it comes out of a feeling of like what's going on. Did you ever walk on eggshells? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> if, you, if you see a, um, a very much awake but reclining uh, lioness, for example, in a clearing, you don't go galloping up and say, you want to play? <laughs> and certain topics you'd have to avoid. Like what? Do you have menopause? <laughs> <laughs> Is it red still? Yeah. Mm. I don't know. Oh. Oh. One of the most destructive aspects of menopause, the one most whispered about, is loss of libido. For many couples going through it, there are plenty of arguments, just not a lot of making up or making out. This is very confronting, this question, but, you know, where would you rate your sex drive right now? Mm. Not right now. I bet you're getting paid for this. <laughs> I love to put in an effort. Um, <laughs> no. It's pretty much <laughs> nil almost. Yeah. It's pretty much mm. nil. And I think they explained to me mm. because I've lost a certain hormone. Mm. Um, and that would happen with all women. Un unless some women have never felt this, then introduce me to them because mm. this is normal. Um, and Do I you like normal? N no. I don't. No wonder women feel lost and lonely, especially with a medical world largely silent on what to do about this universal stage of life. What was your experience when you went to get medical help, assuming you went to get medical help? Well, the, my first experience was just going to the chemist. So I went to the chemist and I said, look, I don't know what's happening to me. I'm getting really hot at night. I'm sleepless. You know, I've got bags under my eyes the size of cabin luggage. And this is the truth. This is what really started me on my what the hell is going on? Why is there so much secrecy? She glanced furtively around the shop and then she looked at me and she mouthed the words, what flushes? <laughs> mouthed them, didn't even whisper them. She mouthed the words hot flushes as if it was something to be ashamed of, as if it was something you couldn't speak about, as if she was saying Voldemort lives, you know, like, what? What is this woman doing? This is a woman who would, you know, if I said I had genital warts, she'd take me to a shelf and show me a heart. Oh, genital warts, come over here, you know, but she would no more say hot flushes out loud. Did you get a better reception from the doctor than the pharmacy? Yes. Well, yes, I did, because then I went to a female doctor who was going through menopause herself and she just said, here, have what I'm having. <laughs> And it wasn't a joint, was it? <laughs> no, it wasn't a joint. Have you got a towel? While her experience with menopause was anything but pleasant, Jean is keen to reassure us life as we know it need not end with the change. But it's out there is what you're saying. Help yeah. is out there. Help is out there. <laughs> and it's a, it's a really liberating time of life. So it's just one pump. And Michelle is now taking the first step to the rest of her life, testing a therapy long denied to women around the world. Considering what you've been through uh, for the last four or five years, how desperate are you for this to work? Very. I'm really desperate. I really just want, I just want my life back. That's all I want. Fifty-one-year-old Michelle Abbey works hard at being fit and healthy. But menopause has made this mum of three miserable and physically exhausted. It took years of various medical appointments and not until she found a GP practice that specialised in women's health that Michelle finally discovered why her world was falling apart. And I think it was the first time that someone actually had the time to listen, and it was just nice talking to someone that got it, and you don't get that often. No. We went through all these checklists and it talked about sleeping, sweats, moods, depression. The one thing that got me was when she said, do you feel unloved? And I said, oh, my God, 
And I said, that's just such an unusual question. But yeah, you do, because sometimes I would just cry for no reason. My husband would go, what's going on? And I go, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Michelle has now been prescribed HRT, hormone replacement therapy, which is also now known as menopause hormone therapy or MHT. I just want my life back. That's all I want. But for a long time, in the world of menopause treatment, HRT has been considered a dirty word, with a study from 20 years ago linking it to a frightening increased risk of breast cancer. And so almost overnight, women and doctors abandoned the therapy. But with nothing as effective to replace it, women have pretty much been left on their own ever since to suffer through menopause. As it turns out, for most, that suffering has been completely unnecessary. If they have debilitating symptoms that are really impacting their ability to function, you know, it's just devastating to see them putting up with that when you know that there's something safe and effective that could be so helpful to them. For the past 20 years, We've believed the shock headlines told the story of just how unsafe HRT is. But that study, linking HRT to breast cancer, has since been discredited as flawed. It's rarely talked about, but the truth is, while HRT may not be for all women, depending on their health, it can help most. Recent studies have found it doesn't lead to significant increase in breast cancer in women aged 50 to 59, or in women who start treatment within 10 years of menopause. And according to Dr. Kelly Teagle, there are other health benefits to also consider. For example, we know that it helps to pr protect against the development of cardiovascular disease. It also keeps bones strong. We know that women actually die less often from COVID. And also it may be preventing Alzheimer's and things like that is being heavily researched. Morning, how are you going, Cassandra? I'll be just a minute. Herself a GP, Dr Teagle is well versed in all sorts of health challenges from all ages. But it wasn't until she was 42, when she started experiencing early onset menopause, that she understood the vacuum of knowledge for many doctors around something every woman will go through. How would you describe that time of your life? Um, it was a bit of a red hot mess. <laughs> As a GP, did you know what was going on? I should have. <laughs> I, I wish I'd realised earlier, I think. But, you know, like many women, my life at midlife was very complex. So, you know, I probably didn't twig as early as I should have. Sort of struggling with symptoms. Shocked um, by her own oversight, Dr Teagle established Wellfem, a telehealth service to reach Australian women anywhere. When you consider the number of women who don't know about their options, would you say that women have been let down? I think this is an endemic problem that relates to menopause and menopausal women being largely invisible. So I think this ties back in with why it's been largely ignored by medicine. As a politician, I'm on a mission to make us all menopause warriors. We started the revolution and it can only get better from here on in. It is a worldwide failure, one that British MP Carolyn Harris is committed to fixing. This is 500 A4 pages of comments that would absolutely break your heart. It is an absolute national disgrace what is in here. To help her suffering constituents, Carolyn Harris has lodged a private member's bill in the British Parliament, which if passed in October, will make HRT available for free to women in England. October 29th. So that seemed to me to be the one that would make the biggest difference in the short term to women. But now people are saying, oh, let's talk about this a bit more. Let's find out what else is going on here. Are you finding that people want to listen? Yeah. The response to me starting to talk about it has been absolutely phenomenal. But there has been some quite emotional um, responses that have been given. I remember one debate 
when the minister responding was a man, when he was younger, he remembers his mother being taken away to an asylum. My mother was 50 years old. But they then found out she had menopause, and that was really emotional for me. She was carted out of the house, and she ended up in what can only be described as a Victorian asylum. As well as free hormone therapy, Carolyn Harris is campaigning for flexibility in the workforce for women going through menopause and more medical schools to include menopause on the curriculum. Currently, 41% in the... So I gotta say, I'm really impressed with what I saw. Um, it's a fantastic video. Um, I will try my best to link the original video if I can find it. <laughs> um, I think I made some mistakes in this. I'm not really sure if I got the full video or not um, in here. But I, I gotta say, I'm really impressed. Um, no one's talking about this. No one's definitely talking about it in mainstream media at all on purpose. Um, cause you know, obviously too, like they're, they're financed by, you know, big pharma. So it's, it's not like a mystery of why they wouldn't be promoting this. Um, you know, just, it is what it is. Um, but patients have to push back on, uh, the medical system. Um, we have to demand if you're, you're supposedly a doctor, you, you passed med school and supposedly in med school, they have. What are, somebody told me it's over six months of hormones, so better put that six months of hormones to good use. And if inflammation and uh, countering neuroendocrine and uh, you know brain inflammation is not the top of your list to, to do, you're not practicing medicine. So I, I don't know what you're doing, but you're you're practicing pseudoscience. So our, our goal is to be practicing medicine and test, get labs, test it, do an experiment, result equals science. Okay. Ain't that, it ain't science. So, um, yeah, and you don't just, oh, you're having menopause. Uh, here, um, let's just give you an antipsychotic drug where you've never tested their GABA or their dopamine or their serotonin. <laughs> you fucking jackass. That's not how science works. You know, just give someone a drug and think that it's gonna work. No, it's, if you don't have baseline stuff, prepare to get sued. Because that's just, no. We can't do that to patients. But I'm, I'm really impressed. I'm really thankful for, for this video. Um, 60 Minutes did a fantastic job, fantastic storytelling. Um, and to get the stories that are out there of people with neurodegenerative disease. That's all this really is, and it's just hormone related. And uh, it's not just in women, and it's not just in men. Everyone is going through this. If there's a person in your life that's having um, these going through these these issues with hormones and, and uh, depression in general, um, feeling like crap in general, it's very important to get um, evaluated by an expert, not a GP or a urgent care. Um, you have to go to an expert who has thousands of patients to do this. Uh, Dr. Bradford Garner at Mercy Hospital is one. Um, there is Dr. Eric Fetty. Uh, you can go to DrEricPrimeX.com. There is Nurse Prac Justin Groach. There is Elevate MD, Matrix Hormones, Defy, Aspire Rejuvenation, uh, Invigorate Wellness in Florida, and just countless others that you, know, you can name. Um, I hope you guys have enjoyed uh, this video and have a fantastic Christmas.